Hey there, it's Bijal, COO of Financial Freedom, and we are going to be talking about how to help your kids, or if you're a teen, how to get through college without racking up a mountain of debt. Or as we say, college should not have to be a debt sentence. And here with me is an expert in the topic. Uh, let me explain why. So Denise uh, Thomas is a TEDx speaker, international best-selling author, and coach to parents of college-bound teens. And using her strategy, because she did use her own kids as guinea pigs, uh, she had both her homeschooled uh, teens attend college on 17 different scholarships, exceeding uh, almost well, $199,000. And therefore, they walked out of college, not in debt, but actually with cash in hand. And she's been helping families for over 15 years. So she knows a thing or two about this topic. Denise, first of all, thank you so much for giving up some time uh, to come to talk to us and the parents who might be watching. Thank you so much for inviting me. I cannot wait to share this information. I've got a ton of questions, but first and foremost, let's go back in time. Let's go back in time to that moment where you as a parent uh, first thought about getting scholarships for your kids. How did that all come about? In all honesty, I was desperate. I mean, most parents wait until their child is a senior in high school. They've got their, uh, their college acceptances and they've got their financial aid form. And they realized, oh my gosh, I have a gap of 20,000, 40,000 or more per year that I have to quote, find that ain't happening. And that's when they get desperate. But for me, that desperation started way earlier. Uh, my, my daughter was just about to start high school and my husband was laid off from his job that he had been with for 15 years. I wasn't thinking about college yet, but that layoff really woke me up. Uh, he got a new job pretty quickly, that was great, but then he got laid off again. So I was thinking, what are we missing? And the truth is we were missing a lot. We were doing our own thing, just not paying much attention to what was going on in the world, what was going on in his industry. And then the stock market crashed. So we suddenly had two houses that we were paying mortgages on. We've got two kids for homeschooling. My husband is out of a job. The stock market crashed, taking almost all of our retirement savings. And we had to use what was left in, in that and our regular personal savings account to cover the bills. And there were a lot of bills. We got to a point where the money was seriously running low. We had just enough to pay for a bankruptcy attorney, a lawnmower and a trailer and start mowing lawns to put food on the table. Now the bankruptcy was liquidation, literally everything was sold. If you could touch it, it was gone. And you've, you've probably heard of things like uh, you know, estate sales. And most of the time I think about that when somebody dies, but this is the same kind of sale, but uh, hello, we're still here. It was really a whole different thing. You know, we, we've all had or been to garage sales before, but this is having strangers come into my home making an offer on the pot I'm cooking my dinner in. What was even worse was that because we had to now move to a small apartment, our two dogs had to go. That was the hardest part. Seeing my children run into the house crying as their two dogs are driven away by their new owner. I did not want to go through that ever again. I don't wish that on my worst enemy. It was horrid. In that recovery time, getting into that, <coughs> excuse me, getting into that new apartment, that's when I suddenly realized my daughter was starting high school. College would be around the corner. We have no savings at all. We have no 401k to borrow against. We have no house to borrow the equity from. Oh yeah, and that bankruptcy means we can't co-sign for those student loans everybody is, loves to talk about every two years. They don't tell you that parents have to co-sign for those, but they do. 
I was just beside myself. I didn't know where I was going to turn because none of my friends had gone through this yet. They were all had the same kids, the same age. And being homeschooled, I'm the high school counselor. I didn't know squat diddly. How am I going to do this? You know, if the finding the money was one thing, but then I also had the homeschooling in my back of my head thinking, are they even going to accept my mommy made it up on a Excel spreadsheet transcript, right? So that was the starting point of my research. And what I found was absolutely astounding. Number one, yes, 70% of college graduates do graduate with debt every single year. Doesn't matter what the economy is doing. That is just a stat that stays the same. But I can do the math. That means 30% are graduating debt-free. What are they doing that the rest of us don't know about? So that was where it began and where it ended was nothing short of miraculous. Well, let, let's dive into miraculous. Of the 30%, I'm curious, do you know how many of those is because the parents were just wealthy enough to be able to just pay for college? You know, that's an interesting question. Thank you for asking that. You know, we always think that, okay, well, we've got wealthy parents out there that either saved, you know, scrimped and saved, or maybe uh, maybe they have the, the, the job that they've worked for and they've got that money and they're able to pay for their kids. There's the college athlete who might be getting paid to go to school. There's the super duper smart kids that we believe are going to college for free. And of course, there's the other end of the spectrum. There's the kids that are really super poor and maybe they're getting free college. No, all of those are myths. Even the ones that are destitute are not getting free college. They do have access to the Pell Grant, but the Pell Grant pays for tuition at a local school where your child is, you know, staying at home, no, no room and board, no fancy college, no out of state, just local tuition. So there's, there's a lot that parents don't know. And it's unfortunate because it's believing these kinds of myths. That's what's keeping our kids in debt. So this is going to sound like a very obvious question when I ask it, but I don't think a lot of parents actually ask it, which is what's the advantage of getting our kids through college debt free because i believe that the norm is either we as parents have saved or we've you know we've somehow you know um the kids are working their way through college um or debt is just basically the norm right so obviously it's again i said it seemed like an obvious question but it's probably not as obvious because of how many kids actually end up in debt i mean you said 70 percent so somehow the thinking is all, is all wrong here. So obviously what are the key benefits of a thinking of this from a different mindset? And it really is a mindset thing uh, because what I found in not only my own research, but with working with clients for so long is that there's a lot going on up here or not. And I, I do try to get through that as I'm interviewing potential clients to determine whether or not they're a good fit for the program. Because the truth is, I don't want your money. I want you to succeed. That is my goal. My only goal is to have families succeed in this program. There are so many things that we believe that are preventing our families from doing this properly. Even if you think, well, maybe we've heard for years, start in community college. You'll, you'll wipe out your, your first couple of years of, uh, of the general education courses, and then you transfer and it's less expensive at the community college, et cetera. That's a yes and no kind of situation. It sounds like a great idea, but when you get to the details, it may not be. That is fine for a certain sector of student. But what I want to do is I want your child to not have that if this happens to be right scenario. And, and those questions have to be asked early. So in trying to graduate debt-free, let me just tell you how freaking awesome this is for both the student and the parents. 
For example, I have kids that when they get out of college, they move on to their, uh, their maybe, they're, maybe they're getting married and they have their significant other with them. Maybe they're just moving on to a new job in a new state. They can start almost immediately contributing to their community. One of the young ladies uh, that I'm thinking about right now, she's in her new state, driving around her new area, and she starts noticing homeless people. And she seems to be passing them frequently on her travels every day. They hadn't found a church yet. So she took what was, had been put aside in her family, in her budget, for church and giving, and she created some nice little baggies, some nice little uh, paper bags, and she would label them male, female, and children. And she would put necessities in them that she found at different stores. She placed those bags behind the front seat, behind the front passenger seat where she could reach them while she was driving. So when she would pass these families, she would stop and she would hand them the bag that was appropriate for their family. And it would have anything from toiletries to coupons to restaurants nearby, anything like that. But she's giving back and she's in her early 20s. Wow. That's incredible. So, so as I'm listening to this, I'm, I'm putting my, my, my thought into the, the heads of parents. And I think one of the questions that I, I may be coming up for, for other people is like, but these, uh, these kind of things never work for me, right? Like, you know, I, I don't have, I'm, I'm in the wrong income bracket, I'm in the wrong demographic, and, you know, my, 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 my cash flow is too high to, to qualify, and all these things that talk us out of looking into something like this. So maybe can you, can you dispel those myths that you have to have this kind of perfect criteria to qualify for some of these scholarships? And you're right, I hear that a lot. The truth is this, anyone can win scholarships. Now, for the college scholarships, it does take a little bit of work. And that work comes into play early in the high school career. So you really don't wanna wait until senior year to get started on what colleges are looking for to create that application package that has them go, ooh, man, I really want this person on my, on, in my college community. Because colleges are looking for three things. They wanna know, are you gonna pass and graduate? Well, your GPA and test scores tell them that. They want to know, how do you fit into the campus community? How are you going to contribute? The most important, what kind of an alumni will you be? How will your adult life reflect back on your alma mater? Think about it this way. They're looking for the next uh, Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, right? Or next president of the United States because they get to put that name, haha, in their advertising. Guess who came, who went to our school, who graduated from here? But you cannot get all of that together when you wait till senior year to figure this out. The earlier you start, the better off you are. And here's another thing about scholarships. Before what I call the COVID years, I was on a stage in California. And when I came off of that stage, a mom came up to me and said, your kids must be geniuses because my kid applied to 40 scholarships and won none. My heart went out to her. What I had not mentioned on that stage and which I try to mention every time I speak now is that no, that $200,000 in scholarships that my kids won, half of them did not even ask for GPA and test scores. Anyone can win scholarships. It's just an essay. And oh, scholarships begin as early as kindergarten. So the more families wait until senior year and oh yeah, here's, I need uh, 40 grand. By that time, they have left a lot of money on the table for a lot of different reasons. So yeah, there's definitely some things that are necessary to understand. And generally whatever you believe to be true is something that's been indoctrinated from college marketing and things like that for decades. And we've got to get past that and understand what it really takes to be able to win these scholarships? What does it take to get accepted? What does it take for the college to want you or to want your team 
to come to their school and be willing to pay for it because that is the key right there. So what I'm hearing is the earlier you start, the better. The, at least the earlier you kind of get get informed and understand the, the, the lay of the land, the better. But what about for parents where maybe their, their child is about to enter senior year or they're already in senior year by the time that they're listening to this? Is, is it too late or are there still options available? Well, the good news is never too late because I mentioned scholarships begin in kindergarten, but they also will go all the way through undergraduate, graduate school and professional school. So there is money available all the way through until you've got that last parchment in hand. However, the number of scholarships available looks like a, a mountain where the peak of the mountain, the vast majority of scholarships that are available are for high school seniors. But that starts the second they step out of junior year. Mm. So waiting till the end of senior year, yes, there's still scholarships available, but you've left a lot of deadlines behind. Okay. So never too late, but, but, but get the hustle on the, the, as, as a parent, or if you, if you have kids, have kids, you know, start looking into this ASAP. Um, just for people who are going kind to of dash off, they don't have the patience to kind of watch till the end here. What is a good URL for them to go to and learn a little bit more about what you do and how you do it? We'll get into the how in just a second, but, but just if people are like, hey, I want to learn more, where do they go? Well, the easiest thing is to go to my website, getaheadoftheclass.com. And if you go to that website, you will find a lot of things about me. But the very first thing you'll see is... 12 Scholarship Secrets. It's a checklist for those who have kids getting ready to apply to scholarships. But I also have something for those parents that have middle school students. And I'm hoping we can put that link uh, down in your, uh, in your right. information there. And it is getaheadoftheclass.com forward slash middle dash school dash years. So middle school years, but with dashes between. Awesome. Okay. And I know that I've, I kind of, uh, before we go on here, I know that I kind of uh, dangled a carrot here to where you come back and kind of at least give us uh, kind of a, a web class to kind of get parents kind of get started and really getting, uh, you know, uh, priming their, their pump in terms of thinking about scholarships that we don't really have time to get into uh, today. But again, um, what is a first step? You know, just what is a, a first good step for parents who are watching this and think, you know what? Yeah, I you know I understand what you're saying, Denise. Um, there, there probably is a better way, and I haven't been thinking about it. I've just kind of been resigned to thinking that well, I'm either going to borrow money or going to empty my life savings out to make this happen. Um, what do you what do you recommend for parents who are kind of shifting from that mindset of that was their old reality, and now they've heard what you said and start to think about okay, what, how do I start? Awesome. Well, in the web class that I'm going to teach you is all about what I call branding or your teen's personal brand. It's not something that gets talked about a lot, but it's extremely important. Your teen has a digital footprint. So do you as a parent. Today, the internet is everything. That is how everybody searches for whatever it is they're looking for. But guess what? Colleges, scholarship boards, employers are also checking out your digital footprint. They're checking out your social media. So the very first step is evaluating your, social, your child's social media and doing this as early as possible because you want to get rid of anything that does not align with your child's values and have time to create that profile that you want colleges, scholarship committees, and employers to see. Very, very important. A few years back, Ivy League schools, two of them as a matter of fact, rescinded acceptances to two students who they found something on their social media that they didn't like. One of those students, it was something from two years back. So the earlier you start to fix this, the better off for your child. I like it. And you know, what I like about that is um, branding is one of the topics we talk about in financial freedom, where we teach kids uh, and, and teens how to you know, make and manage their money. Uh, but of course, branding is such a big part of our entrepreneurial world 
that you know, we love for kids to, to, to learn about branding, but this is a different application of branding it's personal branding, which in our world, we talk about a lot, but now we're going to basically be, be showcasing this to parents or teaching parents um, how to encourage their kids to develop a personal brand, to, to get the scholarships, to get into college and to basically, as you say, graduate as debt free, if not debt free um, as possible. So I, I love that. I can't wait to get get into the uh, the web class version of this, uh, Denise. So I want to first thank you so much for, for kind of opening up the door, opening up the possibility that our kids are not destined to to graduate with with debt uh, as a burden. Um, as we know, it's it's devastating to them um, and can really hold them back in their careers as well. And you know, I'm, I'm sure you've heard the horror stories probably from parents. Who, who who may still be carrying debt from their their college you know college years. I know that people who get into the 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 the, the, the heavier um, degrees in medicine and legal can carry their college debt for for decades uh, sometimes. So you are a champion to to those kids who are thinking about college. Any last words you want to kind of share um, about kind of also the, I don't like to use the word hope, but in terms of parents who might be sitting there or started watching this with. God, I, you know, I'm I'm not sure how I'm going to get my kid through college. Any last words of hope that you can give them uh, as part of their starting journey? No matter what age your kids are, whether they're very young or young adults, anything is possible. Scholarships are for everyone. And I do mean everyone, even adults returning to school. This is possible. There is hope. Let's get started. Denise, again, thank you so much for giving me your time. We're going to be come, I'm going to be seeing you again soon uh, for our web class, and where we can kind of talk a little bit more about the, building that personal brand for the, for kids and teens right from the get go. Um, but I think this is so valuable, folks. Look, if you're watching this, um, don't just kind of watch this and jump on the next video. Go check out Denise's work. Look at her track record. She's helped. She's been doing this for 15 years. She knows what she's talking about. Um, at least look into what she has to say. And if she's someone who can help you, please do connect with her. Denise, thank you again so much. And I'm going to see you real soon on the web class that we're going to do for our parenting community. Thank you for having me. Bye for now.